Hey everybody, happy Halloween. Hello. How are you doing tonight? How was your day? My day was fun. It was Halloween. I am not wearing what I wore to work because what I wore to work was um, a set of flannel Christmas pajamas, plaid. Well, you guys, some of you guys saw them. If you're new to my channel, hi, thank you for being new to my channel. My name's Erin and this is my channel. Hey, everybody. And so flannel pajamas and mm, slippers and a robe, the robe that you saw me wear the other day. And I just wanted to get out of those when I got home. So in the spirit of the last night of my favorite holiday, uh, I've got my Frankenstein and his bride earrings. And then I've got the Frankenstein t-shirt on. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've got a small Timu haul and then I'm going to read your scary stories. So if you want to just stay for the haul and you don't feel like listening to the stories, you can do that. Or if you only want to hear the stories and you don't care about the haul, I will timestamp it all below. So at work today, we... Well, let me get something out of the way. Here is the blue sky, um, which that I got at Home Goods for. She was originally um, seventy dollars, and I got her for thirty. And she's by Blue Sky, which makes really beautiful things, and she's really big and gorgeous and then you put a candle in the back and she lights up and she's very fragile so i wanted to show that to you i wonder where i'm going to put her now let me get this timu bag out of the way let me put my purse right here and get this teeny bag over here. Let's try putting her right here and see how that goes. So at work today, we we had to parade around the entire office complex and sing that hot chocolate song from Polar Express and serve everybody hot chocolate. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. We came in third place, though, for the departmental costume contest. We never... The, the department that always wins is procurement. And they were Alice in Wonderland. And they were... Oh, man, their their department was awesome. It... I, I mean, it looked like a movie set they decorated. And then their costumes were just amazing. So they won, and then who, so we came in third, then procurement, and then I, another department came in second, and I didn't see that one. Anyway, let's start with this Timu haul, okay? The first thing in this Timu haul is something that looks like this. And I read some of your scary stories and printed them out today. And there's some of them gave me the chills, you guys. This says doll instructions on it. I think this is a miniature silicone doll. And I think it's right here. And let's do what I bought versus what I got. I'm kind of off to the side, huh? I'm trying to scoot over. I've got so many. I put all my Halloween pillows here in the spirit of the season, but now I don't really have any room. Help. Look at all of this stuff. Do you hear the little kids outside? You might. You might hear them throwing eggs at our house. Our lights are off. We are not giving out candy. Uh, my mom is sick, and we don't have... Our a lot of things that no electrician seems to be able to fix our front lights and we have like stairs that go up to our front door and they are slippery it has been raining all day and they're pitch black and there are acorns all over them we don't want little kids falling 
So we are not doing candy this year. Why am I all the way down here? Okay, and as usual, I've got a hair in my nose. Um, fingernails have been slowly falling off and I've been replacing them with a different kind. So this is a new fingernail with a spider on it. It's 3D. This one is cute with a little 3D pumpkin on it. This one is driving me insane. That pumpkin, that is that jack-o'-lantern is just too big. It looks like I have something on my finger. It just looks not, nah. And then uh, this one, though, I like. It's got a tombstone on it. And yeah, it also looks like I have something on my finger. Okay, here's what I bought. Wait, this is the wrong, the wrong order. The raw, I bought two dolls, oh dear. Oh dear. And I bought, oh, okay, okay. Let me get my bearings. And my mouth is dry. It's been a nerve wracking kind of day. I got, I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm not used to being in parades. And so, and marching and singing. And I, so I've got a headache that goes from the base of my, ow, what happened there? I cut my elbow. Um, is it bleeding? Oh my gosh, it's bleeding. Anyway, I um, have a headache that goes from the base of my skull all the way down through my shoulders. And now we know that's tension. Did I cut it on this thing? The beads? Beads? Every day my voice gets more and more like a little old lady's. Okay, let me sit up. All right, hello. Okay, so here's what I bought. I bought this mini silicone adorable reborn doll mini soft silicone for $29.55. In this order, oh, it's only partially delivered. N never mind. I was going to say how many items and what they cost, but it, they split it up into three packages. Okay, so here is, it's now twenty nine seventy six. I can't with that face. Here's what I bought. Ah. And then here's what I got. He's very smooshed. Oh, look at him. I can't. Everything's making me. I'm so sappy these days. Okay, I see a cute little teddy bear with no face. With no face. That's kind of creepy. But oh well, okay, whatever. No face. You know Loki's going to take that and take off with it. Then we've got a little... robe okay with like candy cane stripe piping and then we've got a little is it a mask is it a covid mask that's not funny are they diapers i have no idea what this thing is we've got this i don't know i have n i just have no idea none and then Maybe the picture will show me. Oh, okay. It goes around. Ow, my elbow, you guys. Am I getting blood all over everything I love? I need a Band-Aid. Um, it goes on his head. He's 5.5 inches. All right. And then here is the little guy. I'm going to take him to work. Yes, I am. He's going to be my little Christmas friend. Oh, he comes with... Wait, there's still more. Hold on a minute. There is a little... Elephant. 
with the spike in it. I have no idea. I don't know. And then there is a bottle. A little bottle. Now those are going to get lost. And then here is the little guy. He is squishy. He is silicone. He's got his little Christmas jumper on. Or little Christmas, I'm sorry, onesie. Whatever you call it. I don't know. And then we're going to take a look at his little butt. He is squishy all through here. He's got lines and little detail. He's cute for somebody who wants a little tiny silicone doll. All right. All right, all right, all right. And he's only 29 But And when I say only, it's because silicone dolls are expensive. Especially if they're platinum silicone. Or I don't know. Um, Here. Get rid of this. He's only $29.76. Hold him way up here. He's going to be my thumbnail. Get this. Rub all this stuff in. What did I do? Put my makeup on in the dark? Probably. Okay. It's been a long day. Jeez. Put him way up here. Look at my baby. Tilt him toward the light. Don't do that. Okay. Cheese. All right. So we did that. Now what I'm going to do is put all the tiny things back in this bag because you know that Loki's going to get them or Luna. In fact, I'm going to put the doll in here too. He's got little squishy hands. His hands are all curled up and little feet. That was exciting. All right, what are we doing on time? 12 minutes? This is going to be a long video. All right, next in here is a... Oh, no, I forgot a trash can. A trash can. Well, yeah, I forgot a trash can. But I also forgot a trash bag. It's all right. We'll just make our own trash bag as we go along. Okay, hurry. All right. Maybe I won't do prices. We'll just speed run this. This is feels very um, rough, like like um, a Brillo pad. I don't. I'm assuming it's going to be some kind of a Christmas sweatsh. Oh no, it's not. It's it's an XXL. It is not fleecy on the inside. It is a gigantic Pac-Man with all the ghosts around it. And I I don't I don't know you guys. I love yeah, I like Pac-Man a lot, but there comes a time when you just have to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. So I should have said that some time ago. Okay, now I'm going to put this trash in this bag. I've already got that YouTube dry mouth. So let me take a drink of water. The winning costume was this woman who dressed up like an Oompa Loompa the wig and the face paint and everything and she brought with her like a candy factory Willy Wonka like all around her just like pastries and cookies and candy and everything I have never seen anything like it in my life I love people who get into their Halloween costumes like that all right, and put, she got up at three in the morning to get ready. And then she got to work at like five to set it all up. Okay, let's go through some fingernails really quickly. Let me grab all the fingernails. Get your shot glasses ready. If you're new to my channel, sometimes people do a shot 
every time I buy some nails. Now, I used to buy a lot of nails. Now, I've done much better lately. I don't buy a lot of nails anymore. I already have these. It's good to have a backup. I bought them twice. Oops. But not really, because, you know, then these are little nails that I don't understand. So some of them have black French tips, but then some of them have red and holly berries. So I don't know what they're trying to do there. Like Gothic Christmas. I don't know. I'm, it's got like a rock hand on the um, box. So these are, I think, didn't I just show some like this? Cause we like the gingerbread face. I might've bought these twice too. I, I've decided also that I'm really not a fan of the Timu nails. It's the handmade ones that don't ever come off, which is what we like. And these plasticky ones pop off really easily. So that's my feelings on that subject. Those are my feelings. Get some grammar. Okay, these are handmade nails hopefully not by children i'm being serious so i don't hear anybody i don't hear kids running in the streets screaming and laughing and stuff i thought and i don't hear the dog barking and i think my mom's lying down she did let me set up the table with my um witchy Franken witchy hand candle holders and my Frankenstein centerpiece and I got a cool Halloween tablecloth. My mom and I eat at this little card table in the family room because the kitchen table is just too big and the dining room table is for fancy occasions and there's just no point in sitting at the big table so we have a little card table set up in the family room by the TV that we cover with a tablecloth. And um, yeah, someone's gonna say it's giving gray gardens. It's not giving gray gardens. Okay, these are really pretty nails, wintry nails. You are the only, you are special. And my elbow, you guys, it's weird how a little cut like that can't look at all the freckles I have. Okay, anyway, it's weird how a little cut like that can hurt so bad. Um, I went to my P.O. box today, and it was so overflowing with stuff, you guys, that they had to give me one of those mail carriers to carry it all home in. So I haven't gone through it all yet, but thank you so much, you guys, for sending mail to my P.O. box. And some of them I saw were Halloween cards, and I have Halloween cards. I might send you a Halloween card back if you sent me a Halloween card. Because we should let the spirit of Halloween last all year long. Anyway. Oh no, what am I doing in my card? Get out. Get back. Alright. Anyway, thank you. And uh, the people I work with were like, wow, you really get fan mail? Like, they couldn't believe it. <laughs> really? People are sending you mail? It's kind of insulting. I was like, of course people are, they, sometimes people like me. Listen to the screech. Okay, I don't know what this is, but we're going to find out. It could be, uh, well, let me just open it and we'll find out. at 19 minutes and eight seconds. Shoot, maybe I should upload this separately. Whatever it is, it's broken. I don't know if it's broken or not. I Timu is like the land of misfit toys where they just send you all the broken crap that they have in their warehouse and nobody quality checks it. All right, these are little snowflake earrings with little pearls hanging down from them. Those will be really pretty. I like them and I'm happy with them. 
and I don't know. Do you, I might not, there they are. Maybe? No. There's no way I paid 12, excuse me, dollars for those. I am stuck on Willy Wonka. I thought I was going to be stuck on We Got Hot Chocolate or whatever that song is. That Polar, I still haven't seen the Polar Express movie, but we sure did. They brought a little boom box, whatever you call it now, and a Bluetooth speaker or whatever, and they played that Hot Chocolate song. And I thought, I am never going to get this song out of my head, but now I can't remember it. I can't remember it. All right, I don't know where those snowflake earrings are. I don't know where they are, but they sure are pretty. Nope. Maybe those? No. Mm. There they are. Okay, snowflake drop earrings were $2.60, and now they are $2.21, and I don't know why I just stretched my mouth out like that. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. And then the Pac-Man, I paid $7.22 for that sweatshirt or whatever it is. And it's now $8.48. And okay, whatever. So there's that. We did that. And then the nails, you know, they're just nails. Let me put these away in the makeshift trash. But I thought this shirt was funny. Now here's what I'm going to do in 2025. I'm going to stop buying things that I think are funny. I mean, just because I think they're funny, right? I mean, if I really like them and love them and say they're funny and I love, okay. But this has kind of a Japanese vibe to it. It only came in large. I mean, that's the largest I could get. And it's, it, so it's got a fish on it. And then at the bottom... It's got fresh fish and various other objects. <laughs> Is that what it says? Fresh fish and various other objects. And it's like a cool, it feels cool. It's like a cool feeling kind of thing. It's got this keyhole thing in the back or whatever you call that. And... It's like a linen-y kind of thing. Now, I really think it's for a... No, it's not for a guy. Because it. Does, I just don't know what I would wear this with. <laughs> or why. I mean, I guess I could wear it with jeans. And people could be like... Oh, yeah. And I think the sleeves also are a little bit... Oh, no. Yeah, they're a little bit pleated at the sleeve. I don't know. People will be like, I like your fish shirt. Um, kind of. Okay, so there's the fish shirt. I, what did I pay for that? I gotta know, you guys. The suspense is killing me. I think I only paid $5 for it. Fresh fish. Fi mm, fresh fish and various other items. There it is. Okay, order details is what I need. Whoa, see all items. Okay, vibrant fish and letter print short, whatever. $11.79 is what I paid for that. And it is now $9.99. And here's the model. Yeah, I knew the sleeves were kind of cute. So the sleeves have kind of like a cute little thing going on right there. I don't know why anyone would want to wear a shirt like that. <laughs> now I own it. So I guess we'll find out. 
I'm just going to say I got it in Japan and I liked it. It's a lie. That's lying. It's a sin. I need to go back to math. I need to go to confession. And I'll be like, forgive me, Father. For, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was, I don't even know. And why don't you just put me down for everything in the book except murder? I haven't done that. But probably all the rest, yeah. So instead of me sitting in this little dark booth reciting everything bad I've done, just put me down for everything in the book, Father. Thank you. That's how my confession would go. Okay, what is this? It is, so what I read is I read that you can put on nail strengthener first and then put your fake fingernails on over it. So I bought some nail strengthener and we'll see. Maybe not, but one way or another I need nail strengthener. Fake nails or no fake nails. I need to give my nails a break, really, and put some nail stuff on them this that bottle of whatever that was is price adjustment one cent <laughs> yeehaw okay I need to see that and I need to see this okay keratin plus vitamin nails strengthening oil or something not oil 323 nail strengthener for uneven nails and it there it's now 296 by Tenovo Uno I have no idea if it's any good or not I cannot recommend it yet I will let you know but I am taking hair skin and nails I've been taking it for months and my nails are still thin as tissue paper even my toenails so I don't know man. my doctor told me that that kind of thing only really works if you have a biotin deficiency but otherwise I don't know I don't know who am I to talk about hair look at this I looked at the film today like you know the videographer made a compilation video of all of us on Halloween and I saw the parade, and I saw this middle-aged, dumpy-looking woman, balding woman in the parade. And then I realized that was me. <laughs> I just had the biggest, widest, hugest, like my forehead was just like glaring out like a spotlight. And um, I don't know, you guys, I just got, I got a little down on myself today. And I know you guys hate it when I get, when I do that, but hey, we're human. I'm human. Look at these. Aren't they cute? Snowman earrings. And they are blinging. Anyway, it just made me even more resolved to exercise a little and watch what I eat. And I don't know what to do. I don't think I can do anything with my hair line I could get that plastic surgery where they cut your they cut right here and then they pull it down actually but I don't think I want to do that I don't want to do that that's that sounds horrible it sounds like Frankenstein but I did watch a video about it and then I said I don't want to do that I, you know, I love me some plastic surgery. Okay, 380, but just not that. 386 is what I paid, which is a lot for those earrings. And they are now 376. And I bet we can find them cheaper. There they are for $1.56. So, oh no, those aren't the same ones. I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay. 
good. Maybe they're not yet good because I didn't want to feel ripped off. But these have like the sparkly stars at the top and they're cute. All right, we're almost done. This is going to be another little doll, I think. I got two. Why? I don't know. I might give one away. I got an email today from someone who said, why don't you do another Christmas? Why don't you do another giveaway with a few winners? And um, I could do the 12 days of giveaways and give something away every day for 12 days. Or I could do, oh, I hear little kids out there now. Or I could do 12, I don't know, I gotta think about it. And I'm not doing another giveaway until I get the thing packed and in the box first. Because it's the packing that I just, I don't do so well. Okay, this is called, this is a doll. It's another little one. Let's do what I bought versus what I got. It's by Otard, which I really hope I'm saying that name correctly. And it's a strange name. Um, there it is. And here it is. There is no place I know. 2122. Aww. Washable soft touch mini reborn baby doll set. And this one has got a little smiling face. All right, let's see if this one is as cute as that. Or we'll see if they look the same. Naked. Does he have a little ding dong? Because if he does, I'm going to have to put his clothes on first. Comes with a little hat. Hold on, I'm holding him off the camera deliberately. Because if he has a little wiener, I can't show. I don't want to show that on YouTube. Let's just unveil his face. Aww, so cute. Here's his face. He is smiling. Aww, wait, can I smush him? His eyes pop out. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, he does smush. Don't mind the nail glue all over my nails. Okay, that's all I'm going to compare to. Okay, let's compare them. Why? Because we can. Um, This one looks a little stressed out. I can relate. And this one looks happy. Hold them both up and say cheese. Wow, the wrinkles around my eyes. Stop it. I'm just so self-critical today. I'm sorry. A lady unsubscribed last night. She said I was depressing and self-critical and it was getting her down and she couldn't watch anymore. And I thought, depressed? I've never had anybody call me depressing before. Okay, cheese. It's this light that's so bright. Get it away from me a little bit. I mean, I like it, but just we don't need it to highlight every wrinkle. I, these way up here. Jeez. No, we're sick of we're sick of thumbnail pictures like that. All right. I'm curious to see if he's anatomically correct. I just I just wonder. So he comes with a little outfit and a little hat. No, I'm not going to dress him right now. And, or maybe it's a her. Be very, very gentle. Oh, yes, he is anatomically correct. His butt is not as cute as a little baby butt. The other one was cuter, but I don't want to look at the little, there's a little ding-a-ling down there, and I don't want to show that on YouTube. If 
But I love his little outfit with a little teddy bear on the front. That's really cute. Okay, put him in his little bag. And Otard dolls, they always do a really good job with those silicone dolls. I don't know if they steal the sculpts or not. Okay, I don't know why I bought two of those. What am I gonna do with them? It's, I, I don't know. Add them to my collection, okay, but I mean, let me put something behind my old lady. Ah, I really think I'm cutting my elbow on these beads. These beads are lethal. Okay, quit it, quit it. <laughs> Annoying. I can't. Oh, okay, all right. What did I pay for that? Okay, it is now, it doesn't matter what I paid for it. It is now $21.24. And you can get a girl, you can choose girl, a brown-eyed girl, or a blue-eyed boy. And I kind of wish I would have chosen, I've got some regrets. Oops. No, no, no. I accidentally hit a notification okay I don't know all right so there's that we're almost done at 36 minutes we've got this and it looks like a sign Okay, it says Merry Christmas. Now just wait, though. It's not just a sign. You hang your Christmas cards on it. And I don't have, like, a Christmas card display. And so it comes with rope and little clips. And then you take this rope and you loop it through like this so it makes a little round thing. And then you clip the cards on it and that's kind of what I wanted to do to like cards that I got from people but then where would I put a neon sign I don't know anyway I got that I'm gonna put this back in here Or if not, I'll just put it on that wall right there so I can look at it and enjoy it just for me. And that cost everything is annoying me. Everything is annoying. Everything is oh so annoying. Oh, listen to all the little kids outside. I'm so glad they're not coming to my house. I, th I was going to sit at the bottom of our stairs in a lawn chair and hand out candy. And then I decided I didn't feel like it. I paid $5.10 for that Merry Christmas wooden card holder. And it's now $5.99. And so just in case I wasn't explaining it properly, it looks like this. So there's that. And that is the end of that particular order. And then we've got some more nails. Oh, they're Halloween nails? Oh, no. We're not going to be able to... You can have keep the spirit of Halloween in your heart all year long. They say Happy Halloween on them. And um, they're really cool, actually. They've got some blood and some bats and some haunted houses. Okay. And next, we've got something that looks like this. These are earrings. What if I just open the window? Well, my window is open. 
What if I just leaned out and went, get off of my lawn? Man, I tipped the UPS guy again today. Because it was awkward because I was coming home from work and I was getting out of my car just when he was delivering yet another Timu package. And I'm stuck. My hair is stuck. What's happening? And um, that UPS guy, you guys. Uh-oh, this is bad. That UPS guy is the hottest guy I really have ever seen in my life. I'm not even exaggerating. I just love that guy and his big, strong arms. I don't know how old he is. I think he's probably late 20s, so I better stop being a little old lady cougar. But really, though, I'm like, honey, if you need any other kind of a tip, you just let me know. I'm going to try to tip that guy more often. In fact, I'm going to get some $100 bills. <laughs> tip him 100 next time. Then he'll be like, that lady's got some money to throw around. Maybe I need to take her out to... Okay, anyway, look at this. Okay, so these are little snowflakes. <laughs> I got caught up in a fantasy there for a minute. These are little snowflakes, but the back of them have little chains attached to the backs. So you put the snowflakes on the front of your ears and then these hang down behind, which I think is so cool. Really? Uh-oh. Really cool. One of them just fell off the little card. Hopefully not because it's broken. Look at this thumbnail. It's got a little Frankenstein face or whatever. All right, hold on. Put the little snow. So here's the little snowflake. And then... I can't pick anything up. I can't pick it up. <laughs> can't pick it up with these fake fingernails. Pick it up. I'm going to try to get my mom to watch Baby Reindeer tonight while we're eating chili. All right, there. Anyway, these are awesome. I'm excited about those. I can't wait to wear them. I would wear them tomorrow, except it's going to be like 75 degrees or something. I just don't think it would be appropriate. But those things are right here. Hold on. I just saw them. I just saw them. Those things are Tassel Christmas Snowflake Long. $2.41 is what I paid. And then they are now $2.41 Long Earrings. There's the picture. Okay, cool. Then we have a gingerbread man. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I thought it was broken. It's a gingerbread man iPhone holder for my work phone. And I am excited about it. I don't know why I have a pillow on my shoulder. Get this. I wish there was a job for like, a, you know how there are jobs for um, declutterers? Well, I wish there were jobs for clutterers. I would be making some great money. Okay, you put your phone in here. And this is the back. What? What is this blue thing sticking out of his mouth? Oh, well, little things like that, though, mystify me. And why do we need an apple on his hat? First of all, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say this. Why, does, why did they have to ruin him by putting a scarecrow hat on him? He doesn't need a hat. He's a gingerbread man. 
And he's got, I like this is cute, the little tree charm that hangs down. But then we got this weird hat with an apple on it, which is dumb because an apple is much bigger than a gingerbread. Never mind. Anyway, it's cute though, except he's drooling, or I don't know what that is. Drool? taking out all my anger on the gingerbread man I'm trying to get my mom to go to the doctor and yeah I'm angry about it taking it out on the gingerbread man okay I'm gonna call never mind I'm not gonna talk about my mom I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry. I talked to some lady who was just like, you're depressing. You talk about your mom. I come here to have fun. I don't want to hear your problems. And she's right. I mean, yeah. I didn't, I don't mean to dump my problems, but I, I, I just feel helpless because I cannot get my mom to go to the doctor. And... This time last year, they told her she had a year to live if she didn't get dialysis. And she hasn't started dialysis. So, like, every morning, I wake up and wonder if she's still alive. I mean, that's that's my reality, and it's horrible. And I'm a nervous wreck 24 hours a day because of it. And there, I'm just going to say that, and then I'm done. I'm not talking about her ever again anymore. All right, I'm looking for the gingerbread. How much did I pay for the drooling gingerbread, man? I don't know if I can, I don't know if it's in here. I don't know. There it is. Okay, Christmas mobile phone case. I paid six seventy five for it, and it's now eleven oh four. But there are twelve compatible models, so I don't know. Does the price change if you ch no? It always stays eleven oh four. Okay, it's like a farmer gingerbread man. Dog is barking at the kids. We only have two things left. Three things left. Here's some more Christmas nails. Oh, they're cute. Little snowmen on them. And trees. Then we have... I don't know what this is. Dear Lucy, my dog. I hope people aren't at the back door. We deliberately don't have the front lights on. I hope nobody TPs our house or throws eggs at it or anything like that because we're not giving out candy. Okay, we look like the we look like the neighborhood Grinches because our house is always kind of gloomy on Christmas, but not this year, not if I can help it. And um, we don't give out candy on Halloween. I mean, we're like the two old lady. They probably think we're two witches who live in this house and eat little children. This is a fall harvest harvest. It's a fall necklace that culminates in a pep in a pumpkin spice latte. It's got a turkey. It's cute. It's polymer clay. And I think I got another one kind of like this except the things were enamel. But these are all polymer clay. This is not. This is plastic. But, um, nice. That's cute to wear. I'm happy with that. I don't know how much it costs. 
I don't know where it is. I know we've seen it. I've just seen it. What if I just run after the UPS guy next time and go, listen, man, I have to ask you something. I need a Christmas miracle. Could I just have a hug? <laughs> I think he'd give me one if I asked nicely. I'll be like, how's your day going? And maybe he'll say, oh, you know, it's kind of whatever. And I'll say, do you need a hug? thinking of ways to pick up the UPS, man. Stop it. Okay, Thanksgiving pumpkin turkey mat, maple leaf, whatever necklace. I paid $2.59 for it, and it is $4.25 now. And there it is all laid out nice, and let me get my little card thing done. There it is laid out on a nice little thing. Okay, so we got that. And then two more things. At 50 minutes. Oh no, this is going to be a two hour video. Should I stop this one and then start a new one? These are, I've already had these ones before. Christmas nails with bows kind of, and those are pretty, so this really was a nail haul, I haven't hauled this many nails in a long time, and then we have one last thing, one last thing, and they are more nails, we broke a nail record, and they are nice, they are homemade, handmade, they are they have roses on them. So, yay. Okay. Get this out of the way. Time to shift gears. I'm going to turn the... Well, I need it to read. I was going to say I'm going to turn this ring light... I mean, ring light. This fill light down a little. Because it just seems to be blinding. But then I'm not sure I can... Okay, read the scissors away. We're done with those. Okay, let me... Scrape that and take a drink of water. And now, at 52 minutes, I am going to read your scary stories. So, let me get comfortable and let me make sure my mom isn't trying to reach me. No. I just got one in my mail right this moment. Okay. That's cool. All right. I am uh, going to read your spooky stories. It's Halloween here. It's windy outside. It was raining. It's raining off and on. We got the haunted house pillow that wants to marry me or something. It's being a little clingy. Unfortunately, we do not have a neon sign yet. I gotta do that this weekend. Find a nail or figure out how I'm gonna hang these higher. I, I gotta redo that whole wall. And, um, 
but we're all cozy. We got Frankenstein, my main man. He's getting jealous because I'm talking about the UPS guy. Oops, I forgot. Okay, with well, this thing is is gotta go. I what's behind it? The Isaac Mizrahi pillow. Oh, this I was using this this morning when I was getting ready for work. My boo jewelry. Okay, if I take this boo jewelry out, then I can put this pillow back here. All right, here we go. Are we ready? 55 minutes. This submission is from her username in my comments is White Witch. Something, something, something. And she sent, she's writing a book about all her paranormal experiences. So she sent me some of them and I just picked two small ones that I really liked. Okay, here's one. Okay. Wait, let's take a minute to surround ourselves with light. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to open the drawers to anything. Okay, she writes, my first paranormal experience, wait, hold on, is this what I want to, yeah. My first paranormal encounter was when I was 13, 12 on the safe side. Shortly after the death of my mother's father, I was called downstairs. You see, we lived with her parents. I was leaving the living room to... Proceed along the short hallway to the top of the stairs. Halfway along the hallway, there in front of me was my grandfather's face floating towards me. Then in a second, it disappeared. A couple of years later, he came to me in a dream. He showed me a book laid out on a table in the basement that was open to a page, but I couldn't see what was typed on it. The following day, I proceeded to the basement, expecting to see nothing, but there on the table lay an open book. I did not read the pages thoroughly. I was so unnerved. But in finding the book, I found his business cards from when he owned his automotive garage. I wish I had taken the time to read the pages and understand what he had wanted. Wow. Ooh. Okay. And then she also has another one that I like. She's got a lot, so, but she's got one that I should have put a little, here it is. I might have read this one last year. It gives me the chill. I don't, I, I don't like it. Okay, she wrote, I had bought our son a Thomas the Tank um, wait a minute. Okay. I had bought our son a Thomas the Tank engine ornament for Christmas, for the Christmas tree. When you push the button on top, the whistle would sound. On this evening, the ex-husband was sitting in the living room reading the paper. My son was in his room and I was in the kitchen washing dishes. I heard the whistle and went out into the living room to see who had touched it. My ex was still sitting in his chair and our son came running from his room. They both said they had not touched it and that was obvious. I went back into the kitchen to continue washing up and they went back to what they had been doing. Seconds later, the whistle sounded again. I ran just... Oh, I stapled it right there. That was smart of me. I ran. I ran. Just steps. I don't know. Hoping to catch one of them touching it. But neither of them was by the Christmas tree. And at this time, the ornament was swinging on the branch. We had all been in our places as before. At this point, I felt someone was with us. I told my ex the visitor was not from my family, so it must be from his. He proceeds to say that his mother's father had worked on the railway in the States. For me, that answered who had touched the train. But as to why, we didn't know. Maybe just to let him know he was around. 
Ooh. Put a little train ornament on your tree. See if something touches it. Okay, that was cool. She has some really cool stories. I wish I could read more, but I got a lot of emails from people and the weirdest thing. Now, I have a spooky story, but maybe I'll tell it later. Okay. Okay, so here's one. Hi, this is from Susie. Hi, Erin. I have a story for you. It was 2 a.m. Me and my friends back home on Lake Erie were sitting on the beach at a fire. We saw all these little lights flying by the water. As we watched, they flew around us and back and forth. We joked saying maybe they were aliens and our consensus was they needed to take Biden and Trump back to their ship. <laughs> then we can have new candidates for president. We forgot as the night went on. I went home and the next week my friends noticed an article about people seeing strange lights by the shore on the bay. They were exactly the same lights as we saw. UFOs back at the lake. They were there in the 60s and are visiting again. Second story. I was sitting at my computer playing a game in the middle of the night. Suddenly, I felt a hand pat the middle of my back. I said to my ex, I'll be done in a minute. And I turned around and nobody was there. The next morning I was packing my suitcase because the exact time I was tapped was the time when my uncle passed away. Ooh. Okay. We got that one done. Okay, this is a true, here's one from Joyce. And she says, this is a true story. I have only told this to close family and friends because it just sounds too far-fetched and I don't want anyone to think I'm crazy. I'm not. <laughs> if you use my name, please use my first name only, of course. When I was younger and had an apartment before I married, I was woken up one night seeing a little boy walk out of the corner of my bedroom. He had curly, curly blonde hair and blue eyes. He kept, cl he climbed up on my bed and crawled over me to the other side. I could feel him crawling over me. He was about two years old. He just kept staring at me and his face was coming closer to me as he studied my face and he was wearing a yellowish gold shirt with two black numbers on it. I don't remember the numbers. And then, then he just disappeared. I eventually married and had my firstborn, a son. When he was around two, my neighbor had a yard sale and I bought some of her son's clothes. Her son became good friends with my son and they played together. Anyway, I put this shirt on my son one day and I looked at him and goosebumps covered my body and I realized that this was the boy that came to me that night. And yes, my son was in a yellowish gold shirt with two black numbers on it from the yard sale. He also had very curly blonde hair and I just knew it had to be him. I had many nights of sleeping with my lights on back when that happened. I will never forget it. Wow. So she had a premonition about her son before her son came to visit her before he was even born. <sighs> Look, that gave me goosebumps. All right. This is called, this is from Roberta. And it says spooky or just dreaming. And let me quickly take a drink. And you guys, I got a lot. So if I don't read your story, it doesn't mean that it sucked or that I didn't like it or whatever. 
It just means I've got, I got so many of them that I could only pick a few. Okay, as scary stories go, mine may be a little on the tame side. But when it happened to me, the first story was very scary to me. The second story was more mystifying than scary and remains unexplained to this day. Story number one. Okay, years back after splitting from my husband, I moved with my young daughter to my parents' house in a different state. We stayed there for about two years. It was during this time that I had my first strange experience. One night, as I slept, I felt someone sit down slowly and heavily on my bed behind me. This was startling because my family would usually knock or call out if they needed me. I could sense a presence there. Who was it and why were they silent? The feeling became more eerie. My heart raced and I was too scared to turn and look. I must have fallen back asleep. This happened another time or two before I moved out with my daughter. Several years later, long after leaving that house, with my daughter grown and married and my father passed away, I moved back to help my, a my aging mother. Once again, I started having that frightening feeling of someone sitting on my bed at night. Each time I was frozen with fear and couldn't bring myself to look. It seems like there would be a chill if it were a ghost, but I felt a warmth behind me as if from a human body. All I could do was lay paralyzed with a pounding heart. Okay, story number two. While staying with my mother, I had another bizarre experience. One afternoon as I was reading on my bed, a woman I didn't know walked into my room. She wore white pants, a bright pink blouse, and had light blonde hair. This stranger walked straight across the room, stopped at the dresser, lifted a brown leather bag, set it down and reached in with both hands as if to grab something. She didn't show any sign that she had noticed me on the bed. Although she seemed hurried, her demeanor was natural, as if she were just going about her day as usual. I was stunned that someone would just enter my room without explanation. Where did she come from? How did she get in? As I tried to make sense of it, I blinked and she vanished, had vanished. I couldn't believe it. Did that just happen? I felt It felt like I'd glimpsed something from an alternate world, something I shouldn't have been able to see. Cue the Twilight Zone music. Do, 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 do. The experience was so confusing. The only way I can describe how it made me feel is that it gave me the heebie-jeebies. I often think about it and will never forget it. I've since read that feeling someone sit on your bed can be due to stress or anxiety. Like most people, I've had plenty of stress and anxiety throughout my life. Some might say these experiences happened in bed, so I must have dreamed them. I'm not certain. But what I do know is that I've slept in many places over the years. Various homes, dorms, friends and relatives' houses, fancy hotels, questionable motels while traveling, and even cruise ships. Yet, yet that's the only bedroom and house where I've had anything spooky happen. Could it be a reason? Could there be a reason it only occurred there? Ooh. If I saw a woman walk across my room and just sit down and dig around in her purse or whatever, I would be, I would have a heart attack if some stranger just walked in here and sat down and, and started messing around. I, I don't even know. Okay, here's one from Valerie. When my mother was very young, she had a part-time job in a local church in County Meath, Ireland. I think I said that. Hopefully, I might. Maybe I messed that up. Um, 
it was a very common job for people who lived down in the country. It basically just involved ensuring that all areas were presentable and ready for mass the following day. The church is quite small, as is the population in that area, so it is more like a family rather than a parish. Everyone knows everyone, and they all look out for each other. She made the same trip every day, which was about 10 minutes from her home. It was the winter months, so it was darker earlier and quite an eerie walk home. Living in the countryside meant she was able to take a shortcut through the woods. Oh, girl, no. It just so happened there was a full moon that night, which enabled her to have sporadic light when the moon peeped its head through the overhanging branches. The leaves crunched beneath her feet, which added a somewhat spooky atmosphere in the dark wooded area. On that particular night, she said she felt an unnerving sense of something not quite right. She felt as though someone or something was following her. She stopped dead in her tracks and reluctantly turned around to discover what can only be described as a black monster. She was frozen to the spot. My mom said she was not able to process what was staring back at her. Right behind her stood the biggest black dog with balls of fire for eyes. The eyes were roaring red and he was the size of a small pony. Her heart was racing and the palpitations were so bad she thought she was going to have a heart attack. Eventually, she was able to move one foot in front of the other and run for her life. She does not remember anything about that evening except running for what seemed like an eternity. What she witnessed stayed with her for the rest of her life. It was embedded in her brain forever. It traumatized her for many years. My mom told the story many times and you could hear the fear in her voice as she recalled that dreadful night in the late 50s. It was not unusual to hear similar stories about that part of the world. Ireland definitely, definitely holds the number one place in the history of myths, legends, and folklore. Unfortunately, many of the tales have been witnessed by people who still cannot apprehend what, who still cannot comprehend what they actually witnessed. Wow. Okay. Well, don't walk in the woods at night. The end. No, I didn't like that one. I mean, I like that one, but you know, I didn't like that one. Okay, here's one from um, Tan Tanya. Okay, um, years ago, let me fix my dried up lips. I should have brought some lip balm because they're having a hard time enunciating <clears throat> and my voice is sounding all vocal fry. Okay. Years ago, I worked night shifts at a nursing home. They may be called assisted living in the USA, but nursing or residential homes in England. There were four corridors off a main lounge area. This is where the night shift staff would be, if not helping in one of the bedrooms. Each corridor had residents with the same capabilities. Some of the residents were independent and needed minimal assistance. Some were unable to walk, so needed hoisting or similar. One corridor were that was those with a type of dementia, etc. One of the ladies, and then in parentheses, she has Queenie on the independent courier was early stage dementia. She remained in the same bedroom as we didn't have an empty room. She was in there before I started working there. 
She was a lovely lady with lapses of memory loss as seen during the early stages of dementia. We all carried pagers and when a resident needed us, they would press their call bell and our pagers would show where we were needed. Every night, Queenie called for help between 2 and 3 a.m. She would ask us to tell the man in her room to leave. There was no one there, but rather than cause her more confusion, we would act as if we were escorting the man out of her room. She was always very grateful and would thank us and go back to sleep. It was every night and we would go to her on our own as we knew what she would want. And if it was something else, it never was. We would have pressed the call bell ourselves and a colleague would come down. I had been working there for almost 18 months and Queenie passed away. The room was stripped, fully redecorated and around four weeks later, another lady moved in. She only needed minimal assistance as she was unable to walk very well and could no longer remain in her own home. I was working the night she moved in. There were three carers on the night staff and one nurse. The nurse would complete a medication round and the rest of us would assist residents where needed. On the first night, all four of us went and introduced ourselves to the new lady. She was very lovely, very chatty, and very grateful that if needed, somebody would be available. Anyway, we helped her and continued with our rounds. At 2.25, we were all in the main lounge and our pagers went off. It was the new lady and she had only just moved in and we weren't 100% sure as to what she may need. Myself and my colleague went to her room. I went in and my colleague waited just by the door. As you went into her room, her bed was immediately to the right of the room along the wall and I stood by the bed Behind me was a dresser and an armchair in the corner. The lady apologized for being a, nu a nuisance. I reassured her that she wasn't. And then said, but could I please ask the man in her armchair to leave her room? Oh, okay. What? She said, she said he had been there for almost 10 minutes and although she asked him to leave, he ignored her and continued sitting there, just like the lady in the room before her. At 2.25, we were all in the, oh wait, I just read that, okay. I was so panicked and not ashamed to admit, too terrified to turn around. My colleague said, Tanya, there's no one in the chair. I turned to joke Wait, I turned and the chair was empty. Okay, I got to calm down. The lady was very upset and started crying. She was horrified that we couldn't see him, telling us it was cruel to joke in such a way. We reassured her and once calm, she told us that the man had left. As she was of sound mind, we told her about Queenie she was too frightened to stay in the room, so she came and sat with us in the lounge. Whoa! She was a Catholic, and a priest from her parish came to the room, came to the home, and cleansed her room. We never had to go to that room between two and two a.m. and three a.m. again. That experience has stayed with me, although I never saw the gentleman. And I do believe that ghosts do exist in some form. Woo! That one gets me. Oh my gosh. I can't get over that one. Okay. So one lady saw the man sitting in her chair. And then the next lady who moved in that same room saw the man sitting in the chair. What was the man? 
that that guy must have passed away in there or something. Okay, I need a drink. And this is from Casey. Okay. Um, here's Casey's story. I wish my lips were not so chapped. I'm so sorry. Okay, this is her story. When I had a gallery in an old bank in Fort Pierce, Florida, I was told by the man that took care of running things in the day that the place was haunted. He told me he never stayed after five. The city gave tours on Halloween throughout the town of different haunted buildings, and this one was included. Anyway, this gallery was on the third level with lots of rooms being rented by an artist. I was the only one who would go there after dark. It didn't bother me because I figure ghosts are just people that don't want to leave and cross over. I'd go in there to paint with my dog after hours. I was known to stay way into early morning. My dog was a mellow mixed hound, great dog, and my best buddy. One particular evening, I was sitting there painting. It must have been about one o'clock in the morning. My back was against the window and my dog was asleep on the floor. I'm busy, paint, I'm busy into painting. It's very quiet and I'm not thinking about too much. All of a sudden, my dog jumps up and just starts ferociously barking and staring at me. Of course, there was nothing behind me but the window, so I just calmly said, it's okay, is someone here? It's okay if they want to watch me paint, that's all right, lay down, it's all right. He's barking, had me rattled a little, and eventually he laid back down. Good boy, if they wanna watch me paint, it's okay. I understand if I was here all by myself. Oh, I understand if I was here by myself, most of the time I get bored too. The other thing that would happen was I was in charge of turning off all the lights when I left. Often I would shut off a bunch of the other gallery lights early so I wouldn't have to do it later. Then I would go to my gallery area and start painting. I would find that later in the evening, those lights would get turned back on. I would also hear the elevator be summoned up and no one was there. Ooh, I came in early one morning and I had my little blind chihuahua in my arms walking down the hallway when all of a sudden he started flipping out and barking aggressively. And this little guy never barked. So it was very unusual. All I can assume is that he felt the presence of this ghost. On Thursdays, we off okay, on Thursdays we offered wine and cheese in the evening and the public enjoy as the public enjoyed the different rooms filled with art. One time a lady came in and asked, "Are you aware this used to be a bank?" I answered, "Yes." She went on, do you know this building is haunted? I smiled and nodded my head. She continued, this was my office and it was tax season and another lady and I had to work late. We both started hearing noises and music started playing and the lights started going on and off in different rooms. We got so spooked, we hurried outside and called the police. When they arrived, they took the um, lady, wait, when they arrived, they told the ladies, we can't do anything. You want us to arrest a ghost? We had a chuckle about it. She said no one would work here after dark. I told her I did all the time and I shared how I could feel the air change very cold when the ghost was around. I could actually take my hand 
stick it out in front of me and feel the warm air past the freezing cold. I would say, well, hello, how are you tonight? My dog was never bothered by it again. The story was that a woman had fallen down the stairs and died, and that's who was doing the haunting. The only times I felt a little freaky was when I had to go get the vacuum out of the storage room and it would be dark in there. And for some reason, there wasn't a light in there and it reminded me of sticking my hand in a dark room when I was a little kid searching for the light switch and I felt chills. I couldn't wait to grab the vacuum and get out of there. It was also spooky running the vacuum because you couldn't hear behind you so my eyes would be darting all around. That was stressful. Well, that was my experience of hanging out with a ghost. Ooh, those old buildings that we have haunted tours where I live too. And um, yeah, those old buildings, sometimes you get this feeling in there where it's just icy cold and a little bit different okay this is from Kathy and it says alien scare and I think we're almost done we have a few more we have a lot more what is it 125 let me make sure my mom isn't texting me about chili and let me see what time it is and then we will keep I told you I got a lot Okay, it's 7.52. Kathy says, I was spending the night with my friend. It was a warm day for fall and everyone was getting ready for bed. There was a loud noise outside the window. We jumped and Kate moved to the window. She said, that sounded like a ladder pushed up against the side of the house. She locked the window. Kate had just turned out the light. I looked and saw a small light that looked like someone waving a lit cigarette at the bottom of the stairs. I thought it odd, so I asked Kate, does your mom smoke cigarettes? Kate said no, but she will pick one up and smoke it from time to time. Then I watched the light come up the, then I watched the light come up the stairs. Kate said, mom probably has something to tell me so she'll be here shortly. I saw the laundry hanging on a string at the top of the stairs. One of the kids had washed something and hung it to dry from school for school. I could see it well as the light passed by it. The light came through the door and dropped down to about four feet high. Then it became every bit as big as four feet feet around and began to look like an eye with blood dripping off of it. It came to the foot of the bed. I screamed. I blacked out at some point and Kate finally got the light on to see what was happening. I was scared so bad I was shaking. Kate was shocked because we both looked at a locked door. No way that thing came through the lo locked door. What was that? Ooh, that was her alien encounter or something like it. Okay, next. This is from Diana. And she says, when I was in high school about 14 years ago, my family and I lived in an older two-story rock house in a small town in Arkansas. I was always scared to be home alone because I would always hear strange noises and always had a weird feeling. It was a beautiful house, just a little creepy. Anyway, I was taking piano lessons, so we had this older piano that I would practice in our living room. It sat against a wall on the far side of the room and my mom kept school pictures of me and my siblings sitting on top of it. Our couch was on the back wall of the living room facing the television, just catty corner from the piano. 
I remember falling asleep. I remember falling asleep on the couch this particular night. And I guess my parents just let me sleep there instead of making me go upstairs to my bedroom. Everyone else was in bed. I remember feeling something wake me up. And all I could see was the light from the street light coming through the windows. It lit the living room up enough that I could so that I could see everything in the room. I was lying on my back looking over at the direction of the piano because I noticed a dark figure of something or someone sitting up on top of where the pictures sat. I remember feeling a sense of utter fear. I choked, I know, I closed my eyes and thought, please go away. I opened my eyes again, thinking that maybe I was just seeing things, but this time the figure was standing in front of the piano. I could definitely see that it was shaped like a person, but was still just a dark figure. I closed my eyes again, scared to death, and was thinking, please just go away and leave me alone. But each time I would open my eyes, the figure would be moving closer to me. The closer it got, I could see that it was a tall, dark, slim shadow in a long black coat wearing a black hat. I would close my eyes praying that if I opened them, it would be gone. But each time, it just got closer and closer to me. I remember feeling nothing but complete fear and that this thing was nothing but pure evil. I closed my eyes again and remember trying to call out to my parents to come help me, but nothing was coming out of my mouth. I opened my eyes and he was standing right over me. I closed my eyes and tried to scream, but nothing was coming out. I couldn't move my body. I couldn't scream. It was like I was paralyzed. I opened my eyes for the first time and he was gone. I told my parents what happened and everyone was just like, oh, you just had a bad dream. I was 100% awake. I know I was. It's hard to describe the amount of fear that was rushing through my body, and it all felt so real. We moved several years later, but now, 40 years later, I still pass by that house and have the worst feeling in my gut and always wonder whatever happened to that piano. Anyway, I hope you enjoy my story. Happy Halloween to you and all of your subscribers. Thank you, Diana, for giving me the creeps for the rest of my life. Okay, the next thing in here is from Terry. And then I've got one from AK. Then I've got an angel story. And then I've got some short ones, really short ones. Let's, let's do the angel story <laughs> right now. Here's an angel story from Mary. Okay. Um, we lived up on a hillside in a beautiful wine country. We had 30 wooded acres and neighbors were few and far between. One morning I was getting ready to leave for work but was running about five minutes late. I started down our long steep driveway and reached the bottom quickly. I looked around before pulling out and across the road directly in front of me was a man of about 40 lying on his side in the dirt next to a vineyard. He was on his side propped up with his elbow and looking straight at me. My mind started racing. Is he hurt? No one appeared. No, he appeared to be okay. 
where did he come from? He was out front of the 100 year old Victorian mansion my husband grew up in, but had been vacant for years. Was this a worker from the vineyards? No, it wasn't. Harvest. No, it wasn't harvest. I decided to drive on as I was late already. I got about a block away and decided to go back because I feared he'd go up to the house and help himself. No one was up there and I was and it was isolated. When I drove back, this man was gone. I still remember the plaid shirt he had on so he would be easy to spot. I drove by some rows of grapes and looked around, nothing. I drove nervously to the house, honked the horn, waited, nothing. Decided to go ahead and leave. When I got on the freeway, I drove for about five minutes and I suddenly came to a van that had flipped in the center of the free freeway. Steam coming from the engine and some baby toys strung out. I started to shake and glanced in my rear view mirror. Several cars started pulling over with cell phones out, so I knew the accident had been called in. As I drove from the scene, I glanced at my odometer and saw I was so shaken I was going 90 miles an hour. After I calmed down and started going back over the events of the morning, I decided that the man at the vineyard must have been my angel. After all, had he not been there in the vineyard, I might have been involved in that accident. Now, I know this isn't really a spooky story, but it was scary to me. Never saw this man again, and we lived in a small town on a country road. I never believed till that day in angels but I sure do now. All right. Next is from Terry. I need a drink of water. We had moved into an old house that was in fair shape. Yes, there were, there were cosmetic issues that needed to be fixed that we would have to repair. We rented this house for nearly a year when we decided to purchase it. We budgeted for everything needed to fix the house up to make her livable with no future fixes and beautiful inside and out. We added this to the sale price of the house. We got the loan to purchase her. The house had her problems like plumbing needed to be fixed, electrical updated to today's standards. It was settling on the ground, so it had to be lifted. A new solid foundation put under it and leveled. It had a large hole in the living room ceiling where you could see up to the roof. I know this sounds like a lot of work in an old house. It sounds like my house, actually. Was it worth restoring it? We said yes, because it was a piece of history in our county. It was actually two small army barracks that had come from an encampment in our county that had been moved to town in the late 1800s. It also sat on the blind and lunatic asylum land. Okay. They, the two barracks side by side together, connected them together and added more rooms. One of the barracks was my living room. The other was my bedroom. They built more rooms on to make it a little bigger, adding a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. We wanted to preserve the old barracks with their unique windows along with the other rooms. The house was 100 years old. Now to the story. My cousin came to stay with us to help start the remodel process in the, um, he slept on our couch in the living room. One night he came into our bedroom to wake us up. He was shaking and talking 90 miles an hour saying, there's something in there, there's something in there, there's something in there. We got him calmed down so we could understand what he was trying to say. He said that he was asleep and something woke him up. He looked towards the hole in the ceiling, thinking it was an animal up there. All of a sudden, a white form of mist came through it, floated over him, 
pinned him down. He could not move or yell. He said when it left, he jumped up and came to our room. We went to see what was there or may have caused this issue. We found nothing. He was still shaken. He kept claiming it was a ghost. He proceeded to gather his belongings and left our house that night. He would come during the day to work, but would make sure he was gone before dark because he was not going to stay in that house again. We did talk him into staying again, but in the other bedroom. There's a story to that one that caused him to never come back. Okay, this one, I'm gonna try to read it. It's, I didn't realize it was this long. My three children were young at this time and they started telling us things they were experiencing. I started thinking maybe we had a ghost because it was an old house and knowing its history. The kitchen cabinets were always open. I would close them, come back later, they would be open again. The latches were hard to open and I thought, huh, how can they all open at one time with those finicky latches? One day I was at the sink washing dishes and the doors opened. I jumped back and just stood there. Yes, it scared the bejeebers out of me. I said, would you please quit opening my cabinet doors? I proceeded to close the doors and went back to washing my dishes. The doors never opened on their own after that. I had some friends come over to help with some of the remodeling. We were taking a break at the table. My friend had a straight shot view of the front door. Her children and mine came in to ask for snacks. They approached the table where we and the snacks were. My friend was handing each one of them a snack. When the last child stepped up to get there, she picked up another snack and went look and was looking around. She asked the kids where their friend went. They replied, what friend? It's just us. She said, the little blonde headed girl that was with you when you came in. The kids were adamant there was no one else there with them. My friend kept saying, yes, there was. I saw her. I'm thinking now she has now witnessed something. Ugh. I finally tell my husband, I suspect we have a ghost or something. He told me there's no such thing. He didn't take it seriously. I told him about my friend and the cabinet door episodes and what the kids had said. He said, it's just my imagination. Well, a couple of weeks go by where we were watching TV. It was cool, so we had the windows and the doors closed. There was a shelf on the wall next to the TV that had a non-working princess phone sitting on it. The phone had a very long coiled cord that hung off the shelf down the wall about three feet, making it about six feet long. We are really into this movie and all of a sudden it looked like someone had put their finger in the fold of the cord and pulled it out away from the wall, stretched it out as far as it would go in front of the TV. I'm sitting there thinking I am seeing things because my husband didn't flinch or anything. I didn't say a word. The cord went back to the wall. Then from the fold of the cord, I saw the cord stretch out to the side and up the wall about level with the shelf. I am still not saying anything because I think I have lost my mind. Hubby is not saying a word, so I think I must be going crazy. I am beginning to stress out. I definitely am not going to say anything. The cord pulled up the wall and now horizontal with the shelf. Then it was like someone let go of the cord. It swung like a pendulum going back and forth under the phone shelf. It started out a pretty big swing and just swung back and forth until it came to a stop. I had sat there convincing myself my imagination was running away with itself since hubby did not seem to be phased by it. All of a sudden, my husband jumped up off the couch and said, did you see that? I got excited feeling some relief that it was not only me. 
He described everything that I had seen. I told him, I told you something's here. He grabs the phone, wraps the cord around it and says, don't ever let me see that cord hanging again. Well, more things begin to happen in which he has changed his mind that something is in here. Moving on to the following summer, we were ready to lay the new vinyl flooring. We were helping the flooring guy with the installation to help keep costs down. He told us that we had to turn off all ceiling fans, fans and air conditioning because the glue he uses would dry too fast to get the flooring laid properly. We had to hold the pre-cut flooring and lay it as he applied the glue. It was so hot, we were already sweating from the heat of the day. He was sweating too, working as fast as he could to get the flooring laid properly. There were four people, including me, that were holding this flooring up to lay a piece down when he said, when he said to. We would watch him as he's on his knees applying the glue. All of a sudden, he looks up at us to say, who turned on the fan? I told you we cannot have any air moving across the glue. We looked up at the ceiling fan, which was now on low speed. We were nowhere near the light switch to turn it on, nor could we have even gotten to the switch because we were blocked from it. The glue was on the floor between us and the switch. He would have had to stand up to turn it on by the light switch. He never stood up. I told my hubby I did not turn it off at the wall earlier that I had pulled the string to the ceiling fan to turn it off. So you would have to turn it back on by the string to low speed. Did anyone hear the clicks was asked in which everyone replied no. Hubby looks at me saying our ghost is at it again. The guy on the floor said what? We explained some of the things that happened all the while. His face is getting paler and paler, along with a frown on his face. I've never seen anyone spread glue as fast as he did after that to get the job done. He was out of there in a heartbeat. He declined doing our bathroom floor when he, we got ready for it to be done. Years go by with things still happening. My children grow up, get married, and have kids of their own. I had three of my grandchildren come live with me for a while. They were small, three to six of age. I decided that I was not going to tell them any happenings that happened in the past. I did not want to scare them. A little time goes by. I'm in the kitchen washing dishes when I noticed the bedroom light they shared was going off and on. I would say, stop doing that. Finally, I walked to their door, seeing them sitting in a little circle under the light. They had their legs crossed, looking up at the light. I told them to quit turning the light on and off. One of them told me they were not doing it. She was pointing to the inner circle. I said, who is doing it without thinking? The other child said, her, that little girl. Now she, is, now she has shown herself to my grandkids. Thank goodness they were not afraid of her. At one point, we moved to another town for a while and decided to rent out our house. We did not tell the renters anything about the house. Needless to say, I went through three sets of renters that would leave shortly after. All of them would tell me things were happening to them. I told them it was a little girl. She was not mean. She just wanted to be a part of the family. I stopped trying to rent it out after that. There are so many things I could tell you that happened, but I stayed on the big ones. Many people can tell you things about it too, but some could never overcome their fear to become comfortable in our house. After we figured out it was a child and felt she meant no harm, we lived in peace and harmony with her. I don't live here there anymore. We sold the house to a neighbor. No, we did not tell him anything because he said he was going to tear the house down to make his yard bigger. Ah. 
Um, I had not driven down to the end of the road in years where the house is located. I did go to a garage sale that was down by it not long ago. The house still stands empty and really run down. Wonder why he never tore it down. He still lives next door. Okay, in the beginning, it was scary. Then when we accepted what was there, it was not so bad. We lived there for 16 years with her. No problems. She just wanted to be acknowledged. Not all things are scary after you understand what's going on. Not all ghosts are mean and evil like in the movies. I think she just wanted to be accepted. Woo, that was a haunted house. Okay, I think I have got to, it has been an hour and 50 minutes, and I've got to go down, eat chili with my mom. Let me see if there's a short one that I can read really quickly before I go. These are short. Here is an angel story. Let's close with an angel story. This may not be spooky enough for what you're looking for, but it is of the supernatural nature. This is from Lisa. This story is a heartwarming testament to the power of faith and the presence of angels in our lives. In the fall of 1993, my son, who was just three years old at the time, experienced a miraculous event that our family believes was made possible by the intervention of angels. My father, my late husband and I had taken our son to our storage unit to retrieve some items. After parking and setting the brake, we got out of the truck, leaving our son in his car seat. However, the brake failed and the truck Wait a minute, I lost my place. The brake failed and the truck began rolling down a slope toward oncoming traffic. My husband managed to stop the truck, but not before it had entered the path of moving vehicles. What happened next was nothing short of miraculous. Both lanes of traffic came to a halt just 25 feet away from our truck with no accidents or screeching tires. A man approached us and said, angels were with your son today. How else can you explain what just happened? Later, our church pastor spoke with my son about the incident and he shared that he had seen three glowing figures like angels standing in the street which caused the cars to stop. One of them had even placed a hand on my shoulder to comfort me as I cried. Years later, when we drove past the same location, my son asked to stop and see the angels again. This experience has strengthened our faith and reminded us of the loving presence of angels in our lives. This may not be this what you are looking for as a spooky Halloween story, but maybe someone could benefit from hearing it. Yeah, that made me teary. And I think that's a good note to end it on because some of those stories really freaked me out. And there are so many more, you guys. And if you sent one in, I'm sorry I didn't get around to reading it. What I'm going to do is fold down this one and put it in the back of this folder so we can pick them up again another time. Like, this is a, a whole folder of scary stories you guys sent. Okay. I love and appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching the haul listening to scary stories on Halloween, sending in your scary stories. And I hope that you have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it is when you're watching this. 
and I will most likely see you tomorrow. What, tomorrow's Friday? Tomorrow's payday? Tomorrow's yay day? So I will try my best to see you tomorrow. And now I say, how do I stop this thing?